Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, June 20th on Tropical Storm Brett. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. If you hear bird noises in the background, I apologize. Uh, they're very active in the Hawaiian morning here. Uh, but this is Tropical Storm Brett in the Central Atlantic here on the Big Wide Satellite View, continuing to uh, move swiftly west-northwestward in the direction of the eastern Caribbean islands. We also see Invest 93L, the tropical wave behind Brett, continuing to move west-northwestward as well. This doesn't look very healthy this morning, but development is expected by most models, and we could see a quick storm out of this invest as well. But for now, it's not expected to be an imminent threat to land. This video will focus on Brett, which is going to affect some land areas here as it moves to the Lesser Antilles in a couple of days. This is the zoomed in visible loop of Brett this morning. And the trends that we've been monitoring for the last couple of days have continued basically according to expectation. We've seen gradual organization of Brett and we see a well-defined area of spin in the low level clouds right in the middle uh, of these two clumps of convection to the southwest and to the northeast this morning. Uh, we weren't able to see the low level circulation yesterday because there was more thunderstorm activity over the center. Uh, so we're seeing two different things here. One is that Brett circulation is compact and well-defined and rotating vigorously. And there's probably 40 to 50 mile per hour winds on this northern side here. NHC is currently analyzing 40 miles per hour. Uh, but the fact that we can see the circulation this well is a reflection of the fact that Brett is hitting some of the environmental limitations that we talked about yesterday that are putting a ceiling on Brett's potential development. And that is taking the form of some westerly shear in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And we can see that if we look at the GFS sounding that's currently being analyzed. And uh, at the bottom here in this right-hand column, we'll see the steering flow. These wind barbs are about 20 to 25 knots out of the east in the trade winds at the bottom, but in the middle part of the atmosphere, we see lighter wind here at only about 10 knots. It's out of the east as well, and we've seen on model forecasts that there are generally easterlies aloft over the system, which all by itself would look like a pretty favorable setup, uh, but because the trade winds at the bottom are a little bit stronger out of the east, we have a little bit more shear here. So on the sounding, you'll see the max shear value approaching 20 knots on the GFS this morning, and that only gets a little bit higher as we go through time here, moving through Wednesday and Thursday, and Brett approaches the Lesser Antilles at around this time, and the shear has increased to around 25 knots uh, as the system enters less favorable conditions in the Eastern Caribbean. So again, this is likely to put some kind of ceiling on Brett, and uh, that seems to be bearing out so far in what we can see in the storm structure today. Uh, the shear is pushing off the main mass of convection a little bit to the east. In addition, you'll notice that the band of convection right here kind of goes poof at the end of the loop. You'll see it start to evaporate and become more milky white and translucent as only cirrus clouds remain. And that's because this particular band is running into a little bit of a drier air mass here on the northwest side. You'll be able to see that on water vapor satellite imagery. This is that convective band. And you'll note that if you kind of look underneath of the cirrus clouds, there is a general mass of darker black and greenish tint. And this is all very dry air here. And so these thunderstorms are running into that dry air mass and evaporating on the northwest side of Brett's circulation. And as shear continues to pick up out of the westerly direction, the dry air will start to impact the western side of Brett a little bit more going forward as the system continues to march westward into a slightly drier environment uh, coupled with slightly higher wind shear. So if we look at a depiction from one of the hurricane models, this is the Hafs B model, one of the models that will replace H Wharf and H Mon operationally at the end of June. This is the mid-level moisture depiction, and this will give us a good idea of what to expect from Brett structurally over the next couple of days. You'll see that right now, we still have a well-defined circulation generally within the area of green. It is starting to push off a little bit more toward the east, this green field, uh, but we may see a little bit more asymmetry going forward. So within a couple of days here, talking about Wednesday morning, we could still see Brett strengthen a little bit, but its surface circulation may end up closer to the western edge of the deep field of moisture. So we may see Brett circulation 
on the edge of the cloud field, and most of the heavy weather may end up on the northern and eastern side of the circulation, with very little weather happening directly west of the center going forward as this approaches the islands. If we continue to march forward, we'll see that Brett continues to struggle to intensify very much, and then we'll see the Lesser Antilles come on the screen here. This is Barbados, we've got Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and Dominica. And uh, we're going to see uh, the circulation kind of move through this group of islands on most of the model guidance now. And again, there's a reasonable ceiling here given that the shear is continuing to push most of the heavy weather off to the eastern side of the system, uh, given the environmental conditions. And we'll probably see a little fist of wind here and heavy rain on the northern and eastern side uh, on the back side as this moves through the islands. And so we'll expect a brief period of very gusty winds and then maybe some heavy showers and rain and the potential for flash flooding on some of these islands as the circulation scoots through. This is a depiction of what the surface wind field would look like. So you can see that as it approaches the islands here, uh, as you would expect, the northern side has most of the wind. Everything in green here is over 40 miles per hour and in yellow and orange is about 50 miles per hour. It doesn't uh, guarantee that the storm will look exactly like this or have winds exactly this strong, but this is probably in about the ballpark of what we would typically expect in the islands from a storm like this that is struggling with wind shear and on its way through. They're typically moving quickly toward the west, which basically guarantees that no matter how messy the storm looks in terms of its health, there is going to be pretty stiff wind on the north side. You can almost guarantee tropical storm conditions on the northern half of the circulation. And again, the location where this batch of strong wind moves through the islands, there's some wiggle room there considering that we're still about three days out, but we're kind of talking about this Dominica to St. Vincent kind of arc of islands here where we're likely to see Brett move through now on most of the model forecasts. And we'll see if, if Barbados stays on the south side where wind would be lighter, but we may still expect some heavy weather there as well. I just want to show you the difference in model track guidance from yesterday to today. So this was you know, yesterday afternoon, Eastern time. We still had a lot of guidance that was deviating more toward the north, and we had kind of a lot of spread in the location of Brett in the Eastern Caribbean, and that was mainly due to models still being opinionated about whether Brett would be able to strengthen into a hurricane or not. Notably, some of these northern outliers were strengthening Brett considerably, at this time yesterday. But if we look at today's model guidance, we see a much more compact envelope of solutions taking Brett almost due westward through the Caribbean and dissipating as it moves through the Lesser Antilles and continues westward. H-Wharf is the lone outlier which still forecasts Brett to strengthen to a powerful hurricane as it moves through the Eastern Caribbean islands. As we talked about yesterday, this is really not likely. This truly is an outlier solution and a typical bias of the H-Wharf model for storms like Brett. So we're really not expecting a hurricane, a strong one at this point. Uh, Brett is most likely to be a tropical storm as it moves through the islands. And we'll keep an eye on it just in case something unexpected happens. But right now, a reasonable ceiling is likely to keep Brett mostly in check. This is the NHC forecast, which has accordingly been adjusted a little bit lower in terms of intensity. Yesterday, it was forecasting a hurricane Brett with winds of 80 miles per hour moving through the islands. <clears throat> that forecast has been lowered slightly to maximum winds of 65 miles per hour as Brett strengthens a little bit on its way west-northwestward and then begins to weaken as it enters the Caribbean due to the worsening environmental conditions and eventually dissipation would likely occur here somewhere in the eastern half of the Caribbean as we head toward the weekend. Again, you can see the track moving here uh, over St. Lucia, but again, there is some wiggle room. You can see the cone width here kind of extends from St. Vincent and the Grenadines up to a Dominica. So we are expecting this general swath of the middle part of the Lesser Antilles uh, to take some heavy weather as Brett moves through, uh, but we're unlikely to see a strong hurricane here. Regardless, you should be prepared for tropical storm conditions, and those could arrive as early as Thursday morning local time. This is the earliest possible arrival time based on the current forecast, and uh, the median arrival time is likely to be more like Thursday afternoon or evening in terms of when the winds actually arrive. But if uh, the storm moves just a little bit faster than forecast, it could be as early as Thursday morning. 
So that's about it for Brett here, uh, continuing to monitor as the storm could strengthen a little bit more on its way toward the islands, but likely to be held mostly in check. Tropical storm conditions are likely, and a tropical storm watch will likely appear later today for portions of the Lesser Antilles. So keep an eye out at hurricanes.gov for the latest information on those watches and warnings from the National Hurricane Center. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.